Hey guys, welcome back to Trimmer Trails. Well, we finally made it. We are here back on the Eastern Mojave Heritage Trail. I will leave a link to section one if you're curious about it. And if you're not familiar with this trail, this is over a 600 mile long off-roading, overlanding kind of trail. There are four sections to this trail, and today we are finally back up on section two. It's taken us about three months to get up back to this trail because of the winter that they had so bad here in the 2022-2023 season. We are pretty much at the tail end of when I'd recommend getting out on this trail. It's already 94 degrees out here, and it is the day after Easter. As you can see behind me, this is the first section of part two. This trail never lets you really rest too much, and as you can see from the get-go, we already got a challenge in front of us. But there's something really cool on the other side out of these mountains that I want to show you. So here's the quick overview and then we will jump up on the trail and get going. Okay, the MHT, this is going to be section two. We did 110 miles in two days and we had about 12.5 hours of actual drive time. You can expect deep washes, deep sand, shelf roads, a lot of pinstriping, rock gardens, there's massive ruts. This trail pretty much has everything. The modes I used were four auto, uh, four high mud and ruts, and four low rock crawl. The highlights are going to be several in section two. You start off with the Coliseum Mine. You uh, then go down to the TNT Railroad Berm, which is an abandoned railroad. From there over to Riggs Place, which was one of the most largest producing mines in the country. And then we're going to end up at the ghost town of Silver City. Please remember that our cameras have stabilizers on the hills are not going to appear steep and the bumps are not going to be as rough. Also remember that we review this and every trail at the end of our video. Now let's go tackle this monster. So the first stop on section two is going to be the Colossal Mine. This is a massive, massive working mine now. It's probably really hard to tell from the drone footage and the camera footage, but this is a massive pit. It's a third of a mile long, and the water that you see down below is over 200 feet deep. The vertical wall itself is probably, I don't know, five to 500 to 1,000 feet tall. It was really quite an accomplishment that these guys did in the 90s pulling this stuff out. Coliseum Mine had a kind of interesting history, I guess. Essentially, in 1929 to 1939, they came in here with old school methods and just had mine shafts. And in those 10 years, those guys only pulled out 615 ounces of gold, which is really, really bad. Pretty soon after 1939, of course, World War II happened and the mine was forgotten about. It wasn't until 1987 that another company came in and decided they would make it an open pit because the veins are kind of shattered through here. They did really well and in 1987 and 1992 they were the largest gold producer within the eastern Mojave National Scenic Area pulling over 170,000 troy ounces. After that they figured that the mine was pretty much given up on. They had got as far as they could. They pretty much abandoned it in 1990. While we were here we ran into a geologist and another man that was working for the mine and actually a new company has bought the mine and they believe that they can get to the gold at the bottom of this pit. They think it's another 200 feet down. The technology has continued to advance and now in the 2000s it looks like this mine is back once again uh, a working mine, which I found really cool. Really cool, fun stop. Make sure you don't go past the boundary where the fence is if you get up here to check it out because it is now an active mine again. But nonetheless, this is a good stop. So from here, we're going to head back down Clark Peak to the west side of the mountains and down more into the desert. Let's go see what else is out there. It is windy. It is time to get back up in the truck and go.
Chap, what exactly is the EMHT? Well, long story short, there was a man in the 1980s named Dennis Casebeer that came out here and wrote four books that took you all through the Mojave Desert into some of the most remote but vast and beautiful spots there was out here. Unfortunately, we lost Dennis, and in 1994, the federal government came in and made the Mojave Preserve. And what happened was is his books were pretty much rendered useless uh, after that because of the way they drew the boundary lines. So in 2018, a man by Billy Creech set out to remap all of the routes that Dennis had done. He studied for 18 months, looking over maps, asking questions, and him and John Marnell and some other friends finally came up with a new 660-mile trek that became the EMHT, so we have it yet again. They were able to use his books again with supplements, and this is the link above if you're interested in ever doing this trail. I highly recommend getting these books. The EMHT, while it has many sections that are technical, this is more of an endurance trail. This is a trail that's going to test your fortitude, and it's really going to test you mentally. There's a vibe out on this trail, and after hundreds of miles of driving through this desert, you start to become one with it, as corny as that sounds. But the EMHT is going to make you earn it, every little bit of it. Busted tires, pinstripes, and a little bit of body damage is pretty much the norm. Well, hey, good morning to us. We left you somewhere around the Kingston Wash last night. The Kingston Wash is a long, long wash, as you can imagine. Uh, we drove for probably another two hours or so after leaving you guys on the film into the night. Uh, could see perfectly well with our Baja lights up front. Those things were awesome. The wash started to get a little treacherous in certain spots the further we got down into it before turning back up into the mountains where we are now. This is where our camp spot was. We got in here about 9 o'clock last night, slept, woke up, and got ready. We got probably still about 100 miles or so just of this section. So I've targeted a few spots where I think I'm going to end up sleeping tonight, and we will see if we make it there or not. What I do know is that on every section there is a mailbox. And one of the side quests, if you will, about the EMHT is you try and find the mailbox out on the sections and write your name. So it could be literally around this corner right here or it could be another hour or so down the trail. But that's kind of our goal for day one to hopefully find that mailbox. Other than that, I know we have a couple of historical things that we're gonna get to. So let's get the tent teared down and get back up on the trail.
right guys, so first stop of the day. We are finally out of the Kingston Wash, which was a pretty massive long wash, probably 20 miles or so of a wash. Uh, it looks like we may have missed the mailbox last night. I'm not sure, but that's what I'm, my gut's kind of telling me. Nonetheless, we are standing on the TNT Railroad berm. So the Tonopah and Tidewater Railroad, better known as TNT, was pretty much one of the main trains that came through the whole preserve. Essentially, around 1900, they found vast amounts of borax actually out here on the preserve. And a gentleman named Francis M. Borax Smith had all these different mines, and he was trying to figure out a way to get the ore into towns. Not only that, but there were several mines around that were discovering gold and really, really rich silver. So it was pretty much decided that they needed a railroad to get all this ore through. His dream was to have cargo and passengers running from Tonopah into Ludlow, but those towns were just tiny, and there was just never enough profit. And by June of 1940, TNT Railroad uh abandoned all of its operations and just kind of became a piece of history out here on the Mojave Reserve. Really cool stop, really cool piece of history. We're going to stay on the berm and follow this berm for several miles all the way up to a place called Riggs Place, which will be the next place we stop. So let's go check it out. Lost another one. All right, so we're off for the train berm. We're about to take a left turn and start heading to God knows where. Uh, hopefully it won't be as challenging as the berms were, but it's the Mojave Heritage Trail, so I'm sure it will be. Really slow going through that section. There were some uh, fun obstacles to get through for sure. Where I'm standing right now is Riggs Place, and Riggs was a man that had a gold, that had a silver mine not far from here. His cabin is actually about a quarter of a mile up this. I tried to get up there, but the trail's completely washed away and I can't get to it. Right here is where the station would have been. The train track literally is where the truck is sitting, which is four feet from me. And uh, what he had, he had some of the purest silver in the country and he would express ship it to San Francisco to get it melted down. Some of the ore that he sent to them was actually 100% pure silver. So there was no meltdown at all. He was here until about 1914, 1915. All that remains now is just a few of these concrete berms and uh, his cabin slightly up the hill. From here, we're gonna make a left turn and start heading up this wash. These washes out here are massive. As you can see from behind me, all of this is a wash from the mountains and just years and thousands and thousands of years of all this material coming down, you're pretty much in a debris field the whole time. We're hoping to get over to Baker, which is probably about two hours away from us where we're gonna get more fuel and then we're gonna start heading towards Mountain Home. We'll see how far we get today. But anyways, this was Riggs Place. We're gonna jump back up on the trail and see what we can find out.
right, so here we are in the thriving metropolis of Silver Lake, California. Uh, unfortunately, the only people here are the people that we're uh, surrounded by with these graves. Uh, interesting story about Silver Lake. It was actually founded by the railroad. Hopefully, as you saw through the video coming in, and I'll show some more of it, the berm that actually goes across the dry lake bed, the TNT Railroad put that in. I guess today's kind of been all about railroads, which I'm cool with. Anyways, uh, around 1930, the post office in Silver Lake moved to the town close to us in Baker. And that was the downfall of this town, and nothing remains now except this cemetery that has about 20 or so graves. A lot of them are unmarked. Uh, but some people recently, like 1954, uh, I saw one over there that was uh, 2008. They wanted to be buried out here still. So I guess people still have uh, memories of this place. And uh, somebody came through and put a bunch of American flags on the graves too, which I thought was really awesome. Anyways, graves usually depress me. I'm not really big on them, but this is a historical kind of thing. And I wanted to show you what was left of Silver Lake. So from here, we're gonna head over to Baker, which is an actual town that has live people still in it. Uh, we're gonna fill up and buy a tourist thing at the counter. I don't know. And from there, we're gonna turn and start heading towards Mountain Home, uh, which is back up into the mountains. This last section was brutal. I hate that I said at the, uh, the railroad berm that it was challenging because as soon as I said that, we got into this section and it, it just plain sucked. It was mentally draining. That's probably why I'm not all peppy. Uh, it was a hard one, not technical, just you couldn't go faster than four miles per hour unless you wanted to ruin your truck. And those are the trails that I despise. But we ended up in this cool little spot here. We probably got about three or four hours left of daylight. So we're probably gonna look at either target one or target two that I marked earlier for camping. I'm not sure what's between here and the camp spot. If there is something cool though, we'll make sure to stop and talk about it as well. If not, we will see you over at the campsite. day two we've made it to our campsite this is a beautiful beautiful campsite we're actually at an old abandoned mine that i just found off of the trail about a couple i don't know 200 yards or so took the trail up to see what it was about and it's this nice soft sand uh, it's going to be a great camp spot for the night today we did 68 miles we did almost seven hours of travel time um that's just actual trail time i kept stopping the the watch as we would look at different things and film different things. We still have probably 50 miles left, if I'm doing my math right, somewhere around 50 to 60 miles left to get done with section two. Uh, definitely the washes and the railroad berm, the TNT berm were a nightmare today. They were definitely mentally exhausting, uh, a few technical things. Once we started getting up into the mountains, into the valleys, there were some technical sections too. High clearance is definitely needed out on this trail. This trail is a bipolar trail. I'm telling you, like for an hour you were just miserable and you were hating life and questioning why you're even out here. 
and then you turn a corner and it opens up and you realize why you're out here. This is definitely an endurance trail, not so much of a scenic sightseeing trail like the Mojave Road, which is way easier than this. This is more of determination and at moments scratching your head going, why would anybody put themselves through this torture? But you get views like this. We are probably 25 miles from Baker, which is probably the closest town to us. We are out, uh, just out, and we love it. Obviously, because the trail is so long, we're gonna break it up into two sections. I really want to thank uh, Dennis Casebeer, the man who originally did this trail, uh, and then, of course, Billy Creesh, who came back out and mapped it, and a special thanks to John Marnell. He has helped me tremendously. We've been emailing each other, talking on the phone, trying to gear up to do this whole expedition. He's been a super great help. There's so many different things to see and explore out here. We just really scratched the surface today in section two. Of course, we got to do the railroad berm, which was a cool little piece of history uh, out here in the middle of the desert. We checked out Riggs Place, which was that massive silver mine. And then of course, we ended up down there in Silver City. That's probably the lowest we're gonna get in elevation. Now we're climbing back up into the high desert and really looking forward to it. In the next video, we're gonna finish up this section and there are some really cool things in store as well. We have cinder cones coming up. We have lava tubes that we get to go explore. Uh, there's some really, there's, there's a couple other cool mines that we're gonna check out. And of course the scenery is just beautiful. Anyways, thank you so much for watching these videos. We do appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up down below. I will do my best to answer it for you. And until next time, we hope to see you guys out here on the trails. Bye.